Hi there everybody, in this video we are looking at the tests for reducing and non-reducing sugars. So how do we know if we have reducing and non-reducing sugars in our solution? So first of all, let's make sure we understand which sugars are which. So all monosaccharides are reducing sugars. So uh, glucose is a reducing sugar, fructose is a reducing sugar and galactose is a reducing sugar. And then we've also got some of our disaccharides. Uh, so maltose and lactose, they are both reducing sugars. Okay, so all of these are reducing sugars. Now, there are obviously lots and lots of other sugars that you don't need to worry about. Uh, the important one you need to make sure you know is this. Sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. And that's the only non-reducing sugar you need to worry about. Okay, so now we know which are reducing and which are non-reducing, um, what do wh what the reducing sugars do? And then this links into how we test for it as well. So if we have some Benedict's reagent, Benedict's, Benedict's reagent is the solution that we use to test so that we can identify whether we have a reducing sugar or not. So to do that, we would um, take our reducing sugar, add it to uh, some Benedict's reagent, and then we have to heat it at 80 degrees. And if the reducing, so we know that there is reducing sugar because we just added it, and uh, what happens is the Benedict's goes from this nice blue color to a brick red color. So this brick red color change tells us that reducing sugar was present. And what's actually happened is there has been a reduction reaction. So a reducing sugar is called a reducing sugar because it causes the copper ions which are present in Benedict's reagent to be reduced. So this is a reduction reaction. So a reducing sugar allows that to happen. But a non-reducing sugar does not reduce the copper ions. OK, before we go on to that, let's just think about this color change. So we've got here a positive color change being going from blue to brick red. However, um, you could see different colors as well. So if the Benedict's reagent changes from blue to green, that's also a positive test. It could also go yellow or orange. And then what you can so what you can see here, these different colors represent different concentrations of reducing sugar. So if there's just a very small concentration of reducing sugar, that means that there's only um, a, a small number of copper ions that get reduced, we have green. If we've got a slightly higher concentration of reducing sugar, then it will turn yellow, higher still, orange. And if we've got a very high concentration, then it goes red. So what we've got here is something called a semi-quantitative test. Um, quantitative is when you can put numerical values on it. This is semi-quantitative because what I'm saying is there's less sugar if it's green, more if it's yellow, more if it's orange, and then the most if it's red. But we still don't have actual amounts. We don't know how many uh, milligrams of sugar there are per milliliter, for example. But it allows us to make comparisons. OK, so what about if we test for a non-reducing sugar? So we know, and this is very important, remember that sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. So if we have our Benedict's reagent, we add sucrose, we would expect that it stays blue. Remember, you have to also heat it at 80 degrees. It stays blue, so this is a negative result because the sucrose is a non-reducing sugar, and that means the sucrose is not able to reduce the copper ions in our Benedict's, and it stays blue. So Let's say you had an unknown solution and you didn't know if there was any sugar in it at all. You do the Benedict's test and it goes blue. Now that tell, just tells you there's no reducing sugars in there, but how do you know if there is a non-reducing sugar? You have to take another step. And what you have to do is you have to take your sucrose. Now remember sucrose is a disaccharide and it's made up of a glucose molecule bonded to a fructose molecule. And you have to add dilute hydrochloric acid to the sucrose. 
And what that does is it causes a hydrolysis reaction. The dilute hydrochloric acid splits up the disaccharide. It splits up the sucrose. Um, a hydrolysis reaction means splitting using water. So what happens is that sucrose is hydrolyzed into the glucose and fructose monosaccharides. So in your solution, you now have glucose and fructose. They're monosaccharides, which means that they are reducing sugars. If you then take what you've got and you add it to your Benedict's reagent and you heat it at 80 degrees, you will get a positive test. So to test for non-reducing sugars, there are two steps. You have to show that there's a negative test first, which tells you that there are no reducing sugars in there to start with. Then you add your dilute hydrochloric acid, which hydrolyzes your sucrose into the monosaccharides. Then you do your Benedict's test. And if you get a positive reaction there, positive test, you know that there is non-reducing sugar. And that's how you do it. Okay, that's all. Thanks very much.